Lesson 1-6, scatter plots. We use scatter plots to compare two sets of data and to determine whether or not there is a relationship between these two sets of data. In this first example, we're comparing the number of hours studied uh, for an exam by a group of students to the resulting test grades. Um, the first step in determining whether or not there is a relationship between these two sets of data is to plot these points on the coordinate plane. And we'll plot these points in, in the same way that we would plot any group of ordered pairs, with the number of hours studied being our x-coordinate and our test grade being our y-coordinate. As you can see, I've, I've already plotted these points just for uh, the sake of time. You guys already know how to plot ordered pairs, all right? But just to give you a bit of a, a refresher, this coordinate right here, uh, would be considered 0, 0,55, right? That's the first ordered pair in my in my chart here. And what this means is that for the student who decided he didn't have to study, right, for the student who studied zero hours, his resulting test grade was a 55. This coordinate over here represents 2, 98. So for the student who put in two hours of studying, he earned a 98. Okay, so now that we have all of our points plotted on the coordinate plane, we can uh, analyze these points and determine whether or not there's a relationship between the two sets of data. All right, so how do we go about doing that? Well, let's ask ourselves this question. What's happening to the test grades as the number of hours studied increases? So as we move to the right on the x-axis, what happens to our y values? Well it's pretty obvious that they're increasing, right? They're going up to the right. Which makes sense, right? Because normally the, the more time you spend studying for a test, the better grade you'll get, okay? So because the number of hours, or because the test grades are increasing as the number of hours is increasing, this is considered a positive correlation, right? As one value goes up, the other value also goes up. A positive correlation, which just means a positive relationship between the two sets of data. Uh, I cannot write with this thing. And we can actually classify this even further. Because uh, these coordinates are located relatively close together, this would be considered a strong correlation. So it's a strong positive correlation. Let's look at a second example. Okay, in this example, I'm comparing the number of hours that a candle is burning uh, to its height. All right, so for example, after zero hours, before the candle is even lit, its height is eight inches. Okay, and once again, uh, just for the sake of time, I've already plotted these ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. All right, so let's uh, think about what type of relationship exists between these two sets of data. So just like in our previous example, Ask yourself what happens to the y value, to the y values, as the x values increase. So as I move to the right on my x-axis, right, as the number of hours the candle is burning increases, what happens to its height? Well, it's clearly going down. Okay, so in this case, because one value is going down as the other value is going up, this is considered a negative correlation. A negative correlation. And once again, just like in my previous example, because the points are located relatively close together, this will be considered a strong negative correlation. A strong negative correlation. Alright, let's look at one more example. Okay, in this example, we are comparing um, the height of the heights of a group of students to the percentage of free throw shots that they made. Uh, so for example, uh, for this student right here, who is 62 inches tall, he made 70% of his 
free throw shots. Uh, the tallest student, who was 74 inches tall, made 25% of his free throw shots. And once again, I've already plotted these points on the coordinate plane. Alright, so let's think about the relationship that exists, uh, or if any relationship exists between these two sets of data. Alright, so just like in our previous two examples, we are going to ask ourselves what happens to our y values as our x values increase. Do we see a pattern here? As we're moving to the right on our x-axis, right, as the height increases, what happens to the percentage of shots made? Well, unlike our previous two examples, there's no clear pattern here, right? We can't say for certain that the percentage of, of shots is either going up or going down. Uh, there's, there's no real pattern, okay? So when the coordinates don't form a clear pattern, there is no relationship, okay? And we describe that as no correlation, which just means no relationship between the two sets of data. So in this case, that just means that the height of a person uh, really has no impact on, on how good of a free throw shooter he or she is.